Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, other waifs and strays down here, JDOD, and I have Pedro Moa, Strategy Director, Super Yacht Group, the most unlikely kind of company on the planet <laughs> to be interested in an ERP system. Please, tell me the story. Um, well, unlikely, not really, because basically what, what we do is we, we are in publishing, we're a media group, uh, we organise events, mm. so effectively we sell. Right. Uh, we sell a service or a product. So on that aspect, we very much like you know Amazon or you know the bakery next door. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is that uh, yes, the market is quite glamorous, and um, we are very sort of multinationally based. So we're not always in the same place. We quite a lot on the move. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to have a system that we can access information instantly and see where we are at, wherever we are in the world. Right. Uh, and that is the reason why we chose to move to the cloud. Right, okay. So, um, when we were talking earlier about this, you were saying that uh, one of the things that people tend to think about is, oh, I'll pick off this particular problem, possibly CRM, and then suddenly realize that maybe they should have done something else. What was your approach when, when you went to this? Um, to give you a little bit of background, we have sort of four main divisions and they kind of operate like almost independent companies. So one does events, one does print, one does sort of digital stuff, and one is creative service. And they're all kind of growing in different directions. So they were all storing their own in-house CRM systems. Would it be spreadsheets? Would it be you know file maybe, which yeah. is what we used? Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Um, and they're all going in slightly different directions. So uh, our chairman realized that you know as we grow, this is just going to get worse. Right. So we need to pull all the information together and have one centralized uh, source of information that everyone uses and everyone uses the same way, mm -hmm. and hence uh, NetSuite. Okay, that, was that purely from the CRM standpoint, or was that? It started purely from the CRM right. point because we wanted to record, you know, who are our customers, you know, what we need to know about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So very CRM focused. But as soon as we, then we started to look for, okay, we want to track ROI, and when we are on a boat show, we want to see how the sales for the next issue are doing, and we realized you can't do that just with the CRM, mm. unless you get someone to input all that into the CRM. So you're just you know, creating a, a, a fancier version of the problem that you used to have. So at that point, we realized that CRM is not enough. We need to roll out a full ERP, right. and then we have a system that sort of tracks from as getting a business card at a boat show all the way to, to the invoice, okay. all in the same system. And what did you have before on the financial side? Um, we had, because quite a small organization, so they thought like we don't need anything fancy, so they had off the shelf um, QuickBooks. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm not an accountant guy, so <laughs> but yeah, I'm, QuickBooks, which is very easy to use, but the problem I find with these solutions is, is that, you know, whether you're talking about a QuickBooks or Sage or a Microsoft or whatever the heck, is that you know, for all their limitations, and every financial one's limited in some way or other, th those finance guys get wedded to that software, don't they? So yeah. how did you overcome that challenge when it came to saying, well, look, guys, we're making the switch to NetSuite? With, um, with the accounts team, the angle that we had to go in was, this will save you time. Right. You know, and for the accounts department, they're always, you know, they're always busy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're always running out of time. Mm -hmm. So anything that you can give them that saves them time, they'll go for that. Uh, wow. So we I had to spend a lot of time sitting down with the accountants team, almost timing their process and timing really? the NetSuite process to prove them that our process was quicker. Because uh, you, you, <laughs> you sat there with a stopwatch. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like your take, you know. <laughs> Three minutes and ten clicks. Yeah. I'll take you know two minutes and five clicks. Right. Uh, and it was once they realized, okay, there's there's a time saving there. Um, that's what brought them in. And then after that, then they start realizing that there's a lot more than saving time. You know, there's the whole the on demand reports that you know the boss asks, you know, how are we doing? Yeah. And you click on a button yeah, exactly. and it's there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and actually then you realize the boss doesn't need to ask that anymore because. The boss can now do it himself, right? Instead of going to the accounts team, and the accounts team doesn't have to wait for the sales team right. anymore. So you just set him up with dashboards or whatever it is that he needs. And yeah, uh, and that's the beauty of it is that we can, <coughs> you know, personalize dashboards depending yeah. on what the role you are. So you always have, you know, 
on the screen the information that you need to look at and you don't need to worry about everything else right. but the functionality is there in case you need it okay so what do you say to others who are looking at this because there's always this thing about you know should I shouldn't I yeah um, mapping your business is probably the key okay. uh, point nothing to uh, do with the software whatsoever. nothing to do with the software yeah. whatsoever on stage one I think it's essential to understand exactly how the business works mm. you know literally we spent two days with a uh, three sheets of paper you know drawing exactly how the business works you know and goes from there to there and there and there and we suddenly start realizing there's like lots of loopholes and there's lots of duplication and then we did exactly the same mapping using uh, NetSuite and we realized okay there's, you know, it's all streamed here, but we still have a gap somewhere. So we need to find a bridge for that gap. And that's how then you get the software to adapt to your business. Hang on, let me just get this right. So you mapped out how the business performs and the way it operates. Yes. Yeah. But you found, when you say you found loopholes, do you mean you found gaps? Yes. In the way in which things are done? Yeah. So you used it as an opportunity to improve processes as of well? Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, and then when it came to implementing um, NetSuite against those processes, w what did you have to think about that? So, so you go with, you start with the, the vanilla function, yep. you know, and NetSuite works this way, and right. you put on a process and he goes, okay, that matches, that matches, that we need to change a little bit. There's still a gap there. Okay, this is when we have to then go back and go, can we customize this bit? Okay. Uh, and that's what we did. Like, uh, for example, on our system was we needed to, to duplicate our sales records so that there's one for the magazine so that we know exactly the content that it's going right. but it doesn't contain financial information mm -hmm. so it's no good for the accounts team they don't need to see everything and so we have like two two records running in parallel and that's what the vanilla function didn't do so we got that customized right so once that gap was then uh, bridged then you kind of carry on with the with the vanilla and goes like okay that works that works that works and once we've didn't done that, we realize okay, it's not going to cost us, you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands trying to make everything customized because right. we can use most of the vanilla, or we can adapt our process to the vanilla because it's kind of made to to make sense. Okay, <laughs> so so even though you were customizing uh, in the areas that you needed to, the the cost of customization for you was not something that was prohibitive then? It wasn't prohibitive. Right. Um, because that often does snafu people. Uh, it does, and I've spoken to a few people where that has been an issue. Right. And, I th and it's been an issue because a lot of times there's a, not a breakdown in communication, but it's uh, a lot of times the, the person that is in charge of it in the office is not speaking the same language as the guy that's actually yeah, trying yeah, to implement yeah, yeah. it yeah. you know the guy that's implementing is talking about you know processes and uh, and procedures yeah. the other person is talking about interfaces and end results right so you know if they're not communicating properly then there's like a breakdown and then the guy delivers something that is not exactly what they want so communication uh, as far as you're concerned is, yeah, is, absolutely is very important um, what else would you say is really important to get a successful um, make sure that team the end user is on board from day one okay so you know it's, it's very nice to have a system that gives you all the management information mm. but if that means that the sales guy is actually going to have to spend 30 more seconds in using implementing that information it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Mm. he needs to see first why that has value to him and if he sees okay if you do that it means that next year you know exactly what your client is spending and you don't need to spend two hours doing that, then you, you're already safe, but you're already on to a winner. In a, in a traditional IT project, what tends to happen is, is that decisions are made, you're going to buy XYZ software, whatever it is, starts being implemented by technical consultants, and someone somewhere along the line suddenly realises, oh, we've got users that need to actually use this. I think what you're saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, is that the earlier that you can bring the users into the, the discussion about how this is going to to work and how it's going to impact them the the easier it will be for for there to be acceptance is that broadly speaking the way you're saying it yes well from well, I, I would say that certainly from our perspective because in our company there's no one with it background right um including me um, That's so, a problem, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? so so we had to you know find a way that the system works for us so we had to 
you know, translate that into actual IT speak Stuff, to, okay. to the consultant guys that uh, were doing that. Uh, but so we approached the process very much from an end user perspective right from the start. Right. We said, this is what we wanted to do. Yeah. You tell us how it's done, yeah. but this is the, the end result. So we, we did it for, instead of doing it from an IT saying, this is the process, this is how it's going on, run out, this is the benefits. We said, okay, we want to have these benefits. You make it work for us. Yeah. End result, you're happy? But you wouldn't be sat here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silly question, I know, but um, no, no, Ex <coughs> extremely happy. You know, it's nice. it's given proven results, like actual things that we can measure. Yeah. You know, from the simple three minutes to two minutes on on the accountant's time. Yeah. You know, that is a, a time saving, which means that we don't have to employ another accountant right. to do the job that uh, Netsuite can do now. Um, from the sales perspective. Our salespeople can now sell more, and to more people, mm. and because they, the, the the whole sort of lead management system and, and the whole sort of segmentation that we do that Netsuite does for us, right. so all the market automation means that they now have the time just to focus on the people that matter, that people that will actually spend the money, and everyone else goes on to the sort of more automatic process. So we see a real improvement there, like we grown by about 20%. Um, you can say that everything was due to NetSuite, but without NetSuite, we probably couldn't have you done, couldn't it. done that. And that in a tough market is... is in a very tough market. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were extremely pleased when we saw advertised uh, a similar job to what I do now in mm. our competitors magazine, and their main skill was to be able to use spreadsheets. So we were like, we're onto a winner. <laughs> you know, because we we realize that we have we have yeah, the technology yeah. technological edge over them, right. so we are got the competitive advantage. Right. Um, you know, th th those things you you might not be able to put a number down, but you just know that you've got results straight away. Uh, the other thing that we did is we realized that there's new markets that we can now go into, because we produce magazines. And a lot of our magazines were going to a section of the market that we have a lot of contacts with and we produced a lot of content for, mm. but we never gave them the platform to spend the money. Right. And all of a sudden we don't identify, okay, there's all these companies that we work with, mm. but we just give them stuff and we don't give them anything to spend on. So as soon as we started that product, then they start spending. So then we realize that, okay, we identify like new niches within our market. Well, so that enables you to monetize much more rapidly, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the, okay. you know, our, our chairman is an ideas guy, you know, right. we might come to the office tomorrow and he's come up with a new product. Right. And that's week gives you the flexibility of almost, you know, build a mini, a mini uh, company within the company straight away that will do, you know, like different products, different items, different process, different salespeople, different automation. Mm. And you can do that on the spot, and you need don't need to hire a consultant. And no, come in and no spreadsheets. No spreadsheets, yeah. No spreadsheets, people. <laughs> Pedro, what a lovely story. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers.